Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest Cads podcast. Before we get going, very, very quick apologies. This is our second start tonight. We're having some major, major technical difficulties, and it's all my fault. I'm really, really sorry. My uh, my laptop decided it was going to... Um, how do I say this? Pop a fuse. It popped a fuse, uh, and it no longer wishes to turn on, and all of my graphics, all of my video stuff, all of my everything was on there so uh until i get that sorted out i'm i'm relegated to my com old computer which is probably five years old and hasn't been touched in over a year so the last hour and a half has been somewhat stressful apologies to my wife and children but let's move on uh welcome everybody to the cats podcast we're here talking about the wolverhampton wanderers match which sadly finished 2-1 um it was sad the performance was sad the performance was lacking but um, could we really expect anything better after the way we started and the way we played? David Makara, what do you think? Oh, yeah. No, no, we cannot. Not when we come out uh, flat the way we have recently. So maybe the first minute or two we show promise. And then it feels like there's a period of 10 to 15 minutes following that initial couple of minutes that, that we're flat. We're absolutely on the back foot. Uh, we're, making, we're making teams like Wolves, who are not a terrible team, but we're talking about Spurs at home. Spurs at home should be putting up a better fight against Wolves away. And Wolves away looked like the stronger team 10, 15 minutes into the match. Uh, so the result shouldn't be unexpected. We're going down early too often, and we're the ones going down and having to claw back. Uh, we've been lucky. We've had some some miracle shots from Poro uh, lately from Johnson, uh, but <laughs> relying on miracles. And I saw some uh, some calls for a miracle yesterday when Ben Davies had that header opportunity. Uh, yeah. If you're waiting for a Ben Davies miracle goal, that's that tells you something about the day. Now it's not that Ben's that's not a commentary on Ben. Uh, ben is not the player that miracle goal should be coming from. In fact, we shouldn't be waiting on a miracle goal. It should be uh, more systematic than that. So, yeah. yes, I think the symptoms are there. Uh, and the result yesterday was not uh, something that we shouldn't expect based on the performance we saw. I'm not, I don't think Ben Davis particularly was the problem in that game. Um, I, I'll be honest, when that ball went towards him, the initial thought went straight across my mind. Anyone but Davis. Because, like, he's good at punting the ball out, but good in the air, attacking balls, maybe not his forte, I'd say. Um, in terms of fullback play, he was probably the better of the two fullbacks. But we're playing, we're, we're relying at the moment on our reserve fullbacks. And they are reserve, they're, they're our fullback guys, effectively. And they, they did not step up yesterday, for me. But equally, Gary O'Neill seems to have our measure in a certain aspect. He's looked at the way that we play and it seemed to be a case of, right, we get it out of defence and we immediately break and we go down the wings and then we switch it into the middle and there'll be spaces there because three or four times yesterday they created really, really good chances like that. Mikara's nodding, so I'm sure she's got something to say. Yeah, we just are, we didn't seem to see the guys who were running up the middle and that was pretty frustrating. Just so focused. It's like with kids football, you expect you're expected to watch everybody, not just the one who's running with the ball. And it seems mm -hmm. we're too focused on the ball and not the players in play. Yeah, um, there, there definitely was an element of that. I mean, I've talked many times this season about the joy of going back to you know almost playing kids football when you were starting out, when you were playing in your local football team, having that joy the the ability to go and attack because everyone wanted to be a forward everyone wanted to attack you know and that was great and we'd love to see that at the start of the season but at the same time you got to defend properly ash you watched the match what did you think um i've been thinking about this the last few weeks and i came to the conclusion that i'm going to actually eliminate the the first 10 games of the season mm -hmm. and we now played 15 games since that and we have, if we, as Dave and Makara know this, if you're in American sports, you would say we're kind of a 500 team, meaning we win one, we lose one, we draw two, we lose one, we win one. And it's kind of, eh, you know, it really is. And I'm thinking, okay, 
if they didn't have that first 10 games, then maybe these 15 games, maybe that's what we expected. We wouldn't be in fifth or fourth. We'd be seventh or eighth, you know, possibly. Um, so I the big question for me is, and you guys might know, because I never, ever saw Angie's teams before. So I have nothing to gauge it on. I think both you guys, maybe Mikara as well, had seen. I wonder if, because this is a rebuild season, if if Ange Ball, first of all, the first question would be, is Ange Ball come up against the Premier League and it's not suited for the Premier League? Especially if Ange Ball is one way or the highway, no plan B or no plan C. Could it be that Ange Ball, as it has been, has come up against an immovable force, the Premier League, people sussing us out, um, weaker teams sussing us out, or better teams just being better at everything that they do. So that, to me, is a bigger picture. Uh, I want to see him, obviously, for his second season. I don't know enough about him. But the last, even some of the games we kind of won, we didn't really look that great. Something is up. And it could well be that we just don't have the players or, like I said, his strategy of proactive, leaving the back open. Maybe that's not the strategy to use. But I don't know what you guys think. So I think I think that Ange uh, continues to dominate the uh, post-match interviews, uh, the pre-match interviews. He, he continues to shine in those. I think maybe you're on to something, Ash. I think maybe he is uh, cutting his teeth a bit in the Premier League. It is This is the best league in the world we're talking about here. And it's a big step up. Even from a large club like Celtic, it's a big step up. Uh, you should expect to come up with the most brilliant minds of football when you're playing in the Premier League. And I think Ange maybe has a little bit of growing to do. And we saw we saw a bit of this under Poch. Even, under, even in the glory days, when Spurs were just running up the score on people, there were matches – where they looked clueless on the attack. And as you guys say, just passing the parcel around the top of the box. And we saw some of that yesterday. There's something missing. Uh, is it something that Ange needs to figure out and uh, work in? Or is it a combination of Ange and yesterday, for example, Madison? We're tempted to say he just came back from injury. I just was looking at the phone. This is his fourth start. Um, the guy should be pretty close to up to speed by now. And the statistics say he had an 87% pass completion rate yesterday. I think that that, I don't know if that's accurate. Um, the statistics I was looking at on thought Bob said that he had a lot of errant passes, passes that were behind an advancing player. Uh, the sharpness yep. was not there and it wasn't just Madison, but we look to someone like Madison to provide that spark and, and that bit of quality. And that was lacking yesterday. So it, I, I absolutely agree, Ashley. I think that that Ange could be found out and has some some homework and some work to do and looking at a plan B option. I do think that yesterday, in yesterday's case against Wolves, the Spurs players were a bit lackluster. They did not bring their best either. And so the combination of the two really found us out. I mean, this was Spurs at home. This was Spurs at home against mid-table club, and they should have – Perform. I actually do. I, I forgot about your first point. I do think that those first 10 matches of the season set expectations too high. Um, I, I saw whisperings of that at the time when others, including Ange himself, was saying, hey, let's not get carried away. Let's not mm -hmm. get carried away. The results have been wonderful, and it was very entertaining football. But I do believe that it gave unrealistic expectations to the fan base. And so now in this uh, down-to-earth run that we're in right now, it looks worse in comparison to those first 10. I absolutely agree with you on that. I think that we probably set our expectations too high. But I think there could be a component of Ange needing to work some things out. And, uh, and you know, Pep Guardiola has has uh, said that Ange is a bright figure. Ange is a student of Pep. And even though I, uh, I think that Man City has some things to answer to as far as financial fair play, Pep is a, is a brilliant mind in football, and, and Pep has praised Ange. So let's just hope Pep's right, that Ange is going to figure this out, and the combination of Ange figuring it out and players showing up on the day will be enough to turn things around. 
I, I think a lot of the a blame probably does need to be laid at the player's door, to be honest. Um, we were slow in transition, really slow in transition yesterday. Um, we just weren't getting the balls out to the to the wide players, to the attacking players quick enough. And we we're giving Wolves a chance to reset themselves and get in position and make things difficult for us. And once they were in position, they were really, really tough to break down. That some would say impossible to break down. You know, we made we got one really, really good chance when we scored a goal. And that was that was a piece of brilliance from Decky. You know, there's no way that you could expect that to happen every single week. It would be nuts. So for me, yes, we need we as a fan base need to temper our expectations a little bit. But that's because we had such a good start that it pushed everything up. I mean, start of the season, I was saying fifth. I'd still be happy with fifth. I, but then again, I would have been happy with eighth as long as I was seeing better football. Mm -hmm. And I got a little bit lambasted for that. And I think we've seen the better football and we've seen what can be done. We just need to get that back. We've we've lost a little bit of our edge and I think it could be down to players recovering from injuries, getting back, getting their feet under themselves again. You know, there is, it is known that players, their first game back, the adrenaline carries them through, but it's the games after that they've got to get up to speed on. And I think that's where Madison is slightly struggling at the moment. And that's where Benson Kerr is struggling at the moment. You know, the majority of our midfield has been out for various parts of the season. You know, we've not had a settled side since those first 10 games. And now we're paying the price. But we got to push on. we got to, we got to do better. And Ange himself said, you know, it's on me to get things right and get things going in the right direction again. And he's absolutely right. But he's got my backing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has my back. He has my backing as well. I think um, all the reports that are coming out of the media outlets that cover Spurs say that the locker room attitude is really positive as well. Mm -hmm. The players are really getting along. There's not finger pointing. And some of the things that happen when the team is falling apart don't seem to be happening in the Spurs in the Spurs changing room. So that's a positive as well. And yeah. I, I'm 100% with Ashley. I think that Ange deserves at least a second season. Um, I'm not even close to the point where we need to be considering a making a change. I, I think some people are. I mean, you if you if you go and have a look at Spurs Twitter, it's it's a mess right now. There are people going, you know, levy out, but the whole purple and gold thing whatever the colors are i'm colorblind i don't care um but you know people's almost using this as a as a way to to beat down on the team and say oh we've got our tottenham back it's like look if this is the way you feel sod off we don't need you in our fan base to tell us that we should be feeling better or just the side should be should be playing better we know the side should be playing better that's it's not exactly a hidden secret we're going to give this manager and this group of players the time to do it. At least I am. Absolutely. Ash I think social media, you have to be conscious of the fact how much of it's monetized now and, uh, and getting views and getting interactions is what it's all about. So saying something crazy on social media and getting the fan base fired up either, yeah. either for or against what was said uh, has to be weighed in your reaction to what you're seeing out on social media, saying something inflammatory is the way to get interactions and interactions pay off financially. So I, I, I take it with a grain of salt when I see criticism like that, even when it feels like people are falling in line with the, with the initial post on social media and the crazy thing that was shared. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta question the motive there. Is this a genuine supporter or is this someone who's using the fan base to make money? So that's that's my preaching on social media. I take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> it's interesting to see how many fans fall in line with the crazy uh, initial post. That is uh, that's a little disappointing and interesting to see sometimes. But but I don't take the uh, supposed expert who's running, you know, Tottenham Hotspur now dot you know whatever uh, as as the actual voice of the of the supporter. I think that they're there to make money. So. Uh, I think that CADs and, and conversations like we're having right now, these are the supporters that, that have opinions that actually matter to me and not some rando out on Twitter. Yeah. Ash, what are your thoughts on this? We've got 13, I believe, 13 games left. Um, is that right? 13 games? Yeah, 13 oh, games. Something like that. Yeah, we played 25. Yeah, 13 left. 
we've got which is a third of the season, right? Yeah. Okay. Moving forward, we've got two weeks off. Two things. Ange essentially, he's not going to say everything, but he said it's. Of course, he's not going to tell what he's really going to do. He says we just got to work harder and we'll get back at it. I don't know if that's it. If there's something else, getting back to what we were saying about, does he have to be more flexible? Um, uh, yes, the, the guys being healthier coming back will obviously help, but I think. There, uh, while we have some great young players, I thought Saar was super yesterday. He was all over the place, just really working his rear end off. I thought Ben actually worked his butt off too. Um, but there are some guys in our team who are a little older and who may not actually cut it. And I'm I'm thinking about Sonny. You know, to be honest, he's yeah, he's got twelve goals, but you know what? He's not an elite. He's not, he's not Haaland. He's not Salah. He's, you know, it could be that he's just the, the lovely man that he is, is slowing down. We have to find another striker. Richarlison, as hard as he works, I don't think he had a, I don't think he had a shot on net, did he, yesterday, you know? Um, so we we can't rely on on, on that. Decky got a goal, but we'd like to see him get more goals. Is Werner going to do anything at all? Maybe we won't even – he's 27. Maybe we won't even make that permanent placement. So, yes, Ange is going to work on the third of the season, but I think partly the squad still has to be improved. And uh, I, I really don't know enough about the players uh, that, that could come in. But I, th I think it's showing right now that, that – um, you know what? When you lose the ball and and you're going, that's just not good enough. And then you see Arsenal or the our neighbours or Liverpool, and they just have either, either it's a better class of player or they're better at it, or they're just the same class, but they're just better at doing what they do, like getting the ball to another um, a fellow teammate. Because, like as Dave said, sometimes Madison was just giving it away, and I'm going, what's up with that? Is there a mental attitude? What is that? Here's another thing. You see all the videos of them in the dressing room, and it looks great. It's a party atmosphere, and everyone's hugging each other and whatever. Do you think, do you guys think there's an element of maybe not taking it as seriously as possible? I think anybody that doesn't take it seriously will very quickly fall foul of Sonny and fall foul of Christian Romero. Um, because Sonny takes this stuff very, very seriously. He's a very, very professional guy. And Romero will kick your ass if you're not putting in the effort. So <laughs> for me, yeah, um, I think... Well, then he, then he should be kicking a bunch of asses for yeah, yesterday. Is. And the games, be two games before that, to be honest, um, Stu. Yeah, no, uh, I think you're right. I, we have not been at our best since that Chelsea game. Um partially down to injuries, partially down to just maybe getting worked out a little bit and we need to reset and find out what works again for us and go from there. But we've got the time in the season. We've got, I think, the right manager. And this manager is, what, eight months into his job. The closest guy in the league to the amount of time that he's been in is Unai Emery. And he's been in there a year longer. Everyone else, you look above us, Arteta's been there, what, four years? Uh, Klopp, 10 years. Guardiola, eight years. You know, these guys are in, have been in the job long term. They've got their side playing the way that they want it and everything's set up the, the way they want it to be. Now, it all looks great for them. But that's where we're going to be in 18 months to a year's time because we will be ready. We will, we will have stepped up and we will be showing better than we are showing right now. Did you say 18 months to two to, to two, two years, years time? Yeah. Okay, so that's 18 to 24 months then. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So not, not necessarily next season, maybe the season after. Is that what you're suggesting? I think we're going to get better in increments. Um, at some point, we are going to have to phase players out. Somebody like Sonny, who yes. I still think is a fantastic player. Um, yes. And if you look at his, if you look at his, 
scoring rate against his XG, he is massively outscoring his XG. He's such a good finisher. He's the best finisher in the league by quite some distance. Better than Haaland, better than Salah. Not so getting chances. He's not getting chances, exactly. Um, I think maybe there was one chance yesterday that he, if he had been getting it instead of Richarlison, it would have been much more dangerous. So, you know, there's there's still a lot of the season to go. There's a lot of the season to go. And we've got a little break now, a chance for everyone to breathe and take their time and say, right now, let's go back to basics. Let's work out what we're doing wrong and what we're doing right. And we'll push on the good things. And we'll pull back away from those things that aren't working. And for me, let's start with uh, wide play because we are so slow to get the ball to our wide players. It is, it is, it's a snail's pace. And we're giving the opposition a chance to get back and suddenly we're expecting these wide players to do miracles. Or and, when the ball gets out to them, it's it's past to where they're at at the moment when they're advancing yeah. instead of ahead of them. How often do we see promising attacks destroyed by a slightly errant pass, a pass that's five yards mm-hmm. off the mark? And it just absolutely slows down everything and, and now we're back to that set position where we're passing around the top of the box you know speaking uh, Ashley made mention of Werner and Werner what I appreciate about Werner is he doesn't require getting the ball in space he tries very hard to create his own space and go past the player and the number of times that his uh, actions end with a cross seem to far exceed uh, those who are playing on the other side from him He's, uh, you know, Brennan Johnson was was billed as that player, the player that has the, the pace to get past his man, the pace to uh, create space for himself and go around a man. And and we're seeing that out of Werner. We haven't seen it as much out of Johnson. Now, yesterday, he didn't get very much of a chance. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I am happy with what we've gotten from Werner. It's just it can't just be him. That's the problem. And when a cross comes in, there's got to be someone there to connect with it. And there just seems to be something lacking in the cohesion of the team to know when to advance, when to bomb the box. And uh, there's just, there's a lot of little components that just aren't working out recently in the yep. way that they be and the way that they were at the beginning of the season. So the, I think it's a combination one, of all those together. One guy who, Madison, of course, but one guy who I, I, we, we all totally understand because he'd been out for so long. Do you recall before he get in, before he got injured, Benton Core? actually scored some goals. He scored one goal this season where he had he, he moved into that advanced position. It was a great goal. Um, I forgot who was it, your dog? No, not your doggy. Mm, somebody passed him the ball. Maybe Werner actually passed him the ball really well. can't remember. But he was doing that. And that makes another forward striking option that's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And he's just not doing it. So maybe we have it in us. But we hope he's going to come back to full health to be able to do that. He's obviously holding back, but he offers something that's dynamic, absolutely dynamic. Maybe, maybe not from the six number, from the from the eight, from the number eight more than the than the number six. So the, uh, that there is a thing there, Dave, talking about you getting onto those crosses that go in. And Werner is sending crosses in, but nobody's there taking out. And by the way, Johnson did send a couple. Remember, Richarlison has got two goals because he actually did get past some people and and, and he's got two saying, goals. I'm not saying he never does. I'm just no, saying no, that he's not, consistent. not consistent. And not consistently from anyone. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. I'm not just yeah. picking on BJ. I'm saying uh, yeah. that's what we heard about Johnson and we saw at Nottingham Forest. And yeah. You know, we aren't seeing it so much consistently at Spurs. It'd be nice Absolutely. to have some consistency out of everyone, not just him. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, and if we look, if, as you said, we've got, as I said earlier, lose those first 10 games, and it's been kind of like a 500 season. You know, this is not this is not a champion league, Champions League team quality-wise right now. We're not. Mm-hmm. So we can't expect... <laughs> The feeling is a lot better than it was under Conte when we were only a 500 team. Though I have to say, I don't, I don't loathe watching these matches. I don't loathe watching them. Yesterday wasn't the best, but I loathe the football under Conte. So oh, yeah. it's still a big step up from what we had. 
it's still a big step up. Even this 500 ball is still a big step up from what we had. And, and I appreciate that. And I feel optimism, whereas with Conte, there was none. So uh, credit to Ange, credit to the players for, for changing at least my view of mm -hmm. the prospects for the team. Uh, that's definitely happened. And it's there's more... A, there's a stat floating around that we are two points ahead of exactly this point last season. Mm -hmm. And last season, we had the strongest start to a Premier League season that we had in like forever. So for us to have changed our way of playing, new manager, you know, a fairly significant changeover in, in the playing personnel and things like that, to make those changes and still be competing to where we are and have a chance for the top four, I think that's a good season so far for me. It, but Stu, we've had we had a great start. Those ten games that I'm throwing out the window, we had a great start to this season. Come on, it couldn't. Yeah, we I, did. I, it was last year. It, there's no way it was better than what we did this year. Yeah, it was pretty close, I think, but it went on for longer. So, Mister Stat, you figure that out. But ten points, we were in first. Ten games, we were in first place. We weren't we were in first, first place under under Conte for a while. But again, what would you prefer? Would you prefer to watch Conte football or Ange ball? Listen, that's a moot point. I don't think any of us would want that. Absolutely. Exactly. God, no, I think anyone wants to go back to where we were just this time last season. And I think and it was about even... this time last season, the Southampton thing happened. So, yeah, when it all went out the window. Okay. All right. Um, we've been linked fairly... Fairly heavily to uh, Pedro Neto, who was playing for Wolves yesterday. Uh, I, I have to say, I wasn't all that impressed. He did some good things, but when he was putting up the good performance, it was when Wolves were in the ascendancy, when they were on top. And I didn't think it was down to him. I mean, if we're going to be spending the suspected £60 million on a player... That's got to be someone that can lift the rest of the team. That's got to be someone who takes a team like Wolves and drags it forward. And for me, he didn't do that. So for me, he's not the guy. I, I wouldn't spend £60 million on him. I agree with you on that. I was keeping an eye on him as well, and I had the same thought. £60 million for this guy? Like, breaking, it's a record transfer that Wolves are talking about receiving for him. Uh, no, thank you. I don't think so. I think that we can do better. And I, and I have confidence right now that the, that the scouting team that's in place at Spurs is as good or better than it's ever been. And mm -hmm. so they can find that talent. They don't have to, they don't have to settle on Neto just because they've seen him perform in the Premier League. I think our scouting squad is good enough right now to pick that gem out of another league and spend half that money for. Let's hope Absolutely. So. Yeah. Like the Swedish guy. He's going to be in the first team squad next year. Uh, Bergvall, yeah. Yeah. So in yeah. and around the first team, he's been told. So let's... Uh... Having somebody kind of exciting like like his potentially is, is great to add to to what we have, to add in some... You know what? Somebody had said, uh, this is before both you guys and Makaro's obviously time. But there were guys when I was growing up, like Georgie Best and and Jimmy Greaves, and there were Scottish wingers like like Bobby Lennox. And these guys were electric, you know? And what happened to those guys that it would make you just go, I just want to see, I hate Manchester United, but I just want to see Georgie Pez play, you know? Um, boy, you know, uh, it would be great to find gems like that. Are they not there anymore? You know, somebody was saying, why don't we have that other little that other little source in our makeup? Maybe this guy like Engvall, maybe he's like that. Maybe maybe we thought that uh, Keel, Brian Keel might be like that, but obviously he's not getting a chance. Maybe Timo Werner could have been like that, but I don't know if he's going to be, you know. Um, so, yeah, something dynamic. I don't know who they are. And you're, Dave, Dave's right. Like, I hope. I have no idea who they're scouting, but let's dig, let's not pay sixty million. Let's pay twenty five million and get and get two of them for that price. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think there's potentially the risk that the academy system kind of coaches that individuality out of players that we used to see. Um, if you look at the players that had that level of individuality and and had success, you're talking about Ronaldo and Messi, really. You yeah. know. 
and those players come along once in a generation, twice if you're extremely lucky, which we have been to see those two players come through at the same time. Apart from that, you've got to look at players that didn't come through the academy system, players that maybe joined late, but they didn't really seem to last either. You know, who was the last real entertainer you saw at Manchester United, for instance? Well, it's Anthony from Brazil, who's a bit of a busted flush. You had Beto before him, who, oh dear, that man was a, <laughs> a bit of a, a complete nightmare, really. I don't think well, we've got those players coming through because I think it's coached out of you. You've got to be a very That's strong individual to keep that sense of individuality. And I, we do have a couple of players in the in the youngsters at the moment who look really, really talented, but they're in the youngsters. They're down in the under-18s, the under-21s. And, and once again, we just never, ever seem to let these guys, and it's not just Ange, we never seem to, the last guy was, was Harry. We never seem to let these guys play. And, and, the last guy was Skippy. Skippy was the last one to really kind of break through. What happened to Skippy? Do we think Skippy's better than Basuma or Bentenko or Madison or Saar? Oh, I, I like the guy, but I don't think he's he's, he's at that no, level. No, no, but, but I think when he when he was younger, didn't we people go, oh, he's potential captain material and stuff like that? What that's what I mean. What happened to him? Because he had great potential. Mm -hmm. uh, it's he, sad. He, he seems to be a different player since the injury picked up. Was it a hip injury? I don't remember. Yeah, he had a hip injury, before. yeah. And it, it really does seem to have affected him. Uh, he is not quite as explosive as he was then. Uh, as far as that that hero player, the one that you're talking about, I think part of the thing that kills that mystique for me as well is the way that the modern player seems to allow the referee to get in their head. And when you are not getting the calls from the official, when, when you are not getting that foul call that you really feel you deserve and it takes you out of your game, uh, that's not respectable. That's not the hero that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Play your game. Don't let that third party. And the officials are a third party. They're like a third opponent these days. They all look at Taylor yesterday. Um, when, he, when, he, when a guy goes down and he always gives that smug, like, nope, not for me, look. You know, they're a third player on the pitch these days. And if you let that third player run you and dominate you like that, that's not respectable. So I think that's some of it for me personally, is you get a, a player like Richie who who gets all pissy when he doesn't, you know, when he doesn't get the call. And then he just seems to check out for a few plays. Or you get a player like this yesterday who, who sloppily gives the ball away and then doesn't track back. Like and the that. guy runs right up past his shoulder to, to have the wide open shot, you know, and because he's too busy pissing and moaning that, oh, woe is me, I gave the ball away. Come on, <laughs> come on, man. I mean, that's that, that's it's just not respectable, and you're seeing that all over the place. I think it's probably to an extent always been there, right? But these days, the players seem to recognize they're on TV, they're there, you know, player goes down and he, he pretends he's nursing that injury for about three or four minutes to let everyone know, no, it really hurt. I'm really, you know, and that's just not respectable. So I don't know if that has uh, everything to do with it or not that much to do with it, but I sure don't appreciate it personally. I'll tell you a, what's a, not respectable. There was a moment where a Wolves player went down, went yeah, off the pitch, and he, and he, he rolled over out. five or six times to roll back onto the pitch to stop oh, the play. I was yeah. like, yeah, that's a that's a bit naughty. Yes, yeah, yes. That, that was noted in the Isaac household. Yes. Yeah, but, but Dave, uh, Dave, that thing about Basuma that really pissed me off. You know, um, because that's going back to my point. Is there a problem with the? Because I bet you after the game or today's training or day after day, I bet you they're they're laughing and they're playing their music and they're you know they're hugging each other and that's. Just great. But you know what? T t take responsibility for being really unprofessional in that pos in, in that situation, you know, and preventing a goal, which ultimately meant we lost. Really yeah, not yeah, good. The reports well, are correct. A Ange is not the type to just put his arm around a player and let something like that go. If the reports are correct and what we yeah. read, he takes that stuff very seriously. And that's, that's right up the alley of his uh, – his worst pet peeve right there is that mm -hmm. lack of professionalism. So I, I would, even if you're right in the players, I mean, I'd hope that Sonny and Romero who have been mentioned wouldn't treat it that way. But even if some of the players are like, ah, we all make mistakes 
and shredding it off. I, 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 from the reports, I don't think that Angie is. I think Angie's taking that seriously, and they're watching that bit of film and saying, "Dude, dude, you want to start in the Premier League? You got to do better than that. If you want a start in the Premier League, you got to do better than that." But you know, be starting with mate, not not dude, it'd be <laughs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> When he says mate, he's actually being critical, right? When he's like, right? Yeah. Uh, being um, in yeah. in Basuma's defense, I thought he was really leggy towards the end of the game. I thought he should have been taken off. I thought he should have been one of the players who was taken off and substituted. Clearly unfit. Clearly not ready for this game. Certainly not towards the later end. Um, so for me, yeah, he should have been one of the players that was taken off and taken out the firing line and then maybe wouldn't have that issue. He's often had that thing in his game where once he tires, he needs to come off because he, there's sloppiness in him. So fitness is an issue. Let's push on that. Uh, mentality, I think, is an issue. Let's push on that. But as Andrew said, you know, it's his job and he'll work on it and he'll make it happen. So good luck to him. <laughs> 13 <sighs> games, third of the season to go. That's a exactly. good chunk. That's a good chunk, you know. Yeah. And if we, well, we've got some winnable games coming up. Um, we've got Crystal Palace up next on March the 2nd. Probably they're going to have a new manager in place by then. Um, I understand Roy, who's currently ill. Get well soon, buddy. Um, he will not be returning to the job. Um, he's going to be sacked or retire. One of those two. And uh, Oliver Glasner from Germany will be coming in. It's a, a manager that we were actually linked with a little while back. And... Um, Let's hope he has a really rough start to his time in the Premier League because right now we could kind of do with a nice, easy game. How long has it been since Spurs have scored four in a match? Is it Newcastle? Yeah, so something like that. It's been a while since our since our attack has really purred. It would be nice. It really would be nice to restore that legacy. Yeah. <laughs> At the beginning of that of that second half, Dave, uh, against Brentford, when we got three goals in nine minutes, that was exciting, and that that, was exciting. that could have been four or five goals. You know, it could like we used to do on the potch. That and could how have did we, How did we get those goals? We put the ball wide and we moved quickly, and players got in the box, and that's not what we've been doing. So yeah, let's quick, uh, quick. work on it. I think tempo is a thing. Uh, yeah. Tempo. I think one of you other guys mentioned it. Temple, getting it up to the wing, whatever. Yeah, they got this malarkey, passing it back and forth and this and that. You know, come on. Yeah. One touch passing that we saw at the beginning of the season was really confounding the teams too. But they've learned now that um, just stifling us with the press really seems to shut that down. And so, yeah, like it's been already mentioned, they've made adjustments. The whole league has made adjustments when they're when they're playing Spurs, and it's been effective. So it's it's up to Ange to figure out. How to how to counteract the counteract? He'll get there. Well, that he'll get there. I'm does, confident. Does he have a plan B? I'm, let's hope he does. You know. All right. Okay. So our next show will be on March the third. Uh, we'll be talking about Crystal Palace. Uh, we may sneak in another one in between sometime in the next two weeks because we haven't had a February show yet. Um, we'll let you know. Keep an eye on the channel uh, if you haven't manage to subscribe it and you've got this far into the video please give that button a tickle and uh we will be back very very soon until then everybody thank you very much and come on you spurs <laughs>